And this is supposed to be a successful hospital. It's very small and looks empty. Things can't be going well when there's no one in the waiting room. What's going on? The healthcare industry paradigm has changed radically. Healthcare is no longer about treating a patient when that person falls ill. But instead, it's all about monitoring and preventing illnesses before they have a chance to develop. Where are all the patients? Most of them are at home. This is the best way to treat them in the safest, most effective and least costly venue. This way also has the least emotional impact on the daily life of elderly people. Look, Karen. In the future, each person will have a complete electronic medical record that will contain all the person's details. Genetic background, habits, diet, even the percentage of cancer-causing agents the person is exposed to. But this opens up yet more challenges for you. You mean hackers? To protect all this information requires the greatest advances in cybersecurity. If someone develops a disease when traveling, their EMR will be shared instantly with the medical staff at that person's destination. Doctors can even perform remote surgery from another country. This will change travel insurance forever. Okay. So if I start gathering all this data and information together... Your company will usher in the era of true predictive medicine. Predictive? As if you could see the future. Thanks to deep learning algorithms, it will be possible to prevent hundreds of illnesses. Imagine being able to predict an outbreak of malaria in Africa so it can be stopped in time. The progress made with the Internet of Things is going to be essential for this health revolution. It will be possible to continuously monitor each patient using sensor technology. For example, right now, IoT technology is looking for software updates for Albert's digital pacemaker. I understand. If we're continuously monitoring biometric signs, we can deal with the heart attack before it even happens. Yes, Karen. There will be a shift in social paradigm. People will become more aware of their health and the importance of healthy life habits. New technologies will play a key role. They will create tailored exercise plans and help to improve people's diets. Insurers will also adapt to this situation. Individuals making healthy choices will pay less for medical insurance. The other great revolution will be the reality of true virtual care. I get it. The key word is efficiency, which reduces visits to the doctor, which leads to less surgical intervention. Efficiency, which reduces staff costs and patient numbers. But what happens if there's a real emergency? This is what happens when there is an emergency. This is supposed to be an emergency. They look healthy to me. Excuse me, but sensors have detected something unusual on Mr. Williams' biosignals. How are you feeling right now, sir? Well, the truth is, my arm is starting to feel a bit strange. Does it feel numb? Yes. It will be, it will be fine if, we, if I sit. Doctor, what is happening? Your husband is suffering a heart attack, but please don't panic. Right now, an ambulance is right on his way, and a medical AED drone has been dispatched. Please. 
Follow the instructions on the drone. He's gonna be okay, right, Entity? According to my data, he makes a full recovery. Don't you recognize where you are? This is where our flagship office once stood. Exactly. Most of the companies involved in healthcare are bound to vanish. And if you don't listen to what I've shown you, yours will be one of them. Not on my watch. Entity, can I go back to my time now? Of course, Karen. Before I go, Entity, thanks for waking me up. Hello, Karen. Welcome to the present. Patients and doctor, instead of an expert and someone listening, they're really going to be peers. They're going to work together and partners so that we can really be authentic in the conversations. Sometimes I don't think we tell our doctors everything we need to do. You know, we feel, oh, I didn't eat those chips or maybe I'm not smoking when I really am. So for us, since I believe that chronic conditions are really the problems we're going to have to solve in the future, if we aren't honest with ourselves, if we're not honest with our provider, we're not going to be able to make the health changes that we need to so that we can live a healthier life. Do you believe that telemedicine is a real solution to the problems that we face? I think telemedicine will come to being maybe a little bit longer than we currently have hoped. I know that there have been telemedicine trials for the past five years, but as, as our our Skype and our Facebook and all the videos, the quality of the video improves, so will these interactions. So one of the struggles that we've had was, can you really see rashes and conditions and, and those kind of dimensions that you need in telemedicine? As that video improves, so will the ability to do telemedicine. I think in psychology and those areas, we're already seeing great strides. And as we get closer, as tests evolve too, that will make a difference. If so, what's going to happen to hospitals and care centers? Do you think more care will be provided in the home? I think we're gonna see a lot less visits to the doctor as telemedicine, as the way we can test patients a lot easier that they can have home tests. We're already seeing more and more home tests as those those testing and diagnoses mechanisms improve. We will see more patients doing those types of tests um, at, in their home and we'll see less visits. And the visits that we see will be for larger, newer diagnoses or as well as surgical procedures that we might not want to do at home for sanitary um, or complication reasons.